Hello Solace people, welcome to another video. In this video we'll explain you a pattern called Circuit Breaker. And this is like a serverless partner, particularly useful when you are integrating a third party service inside your Lambda function. The first time I read about it was on the Jeremy Daly blog post. And since the blog post is from like five years ago or something, it got me the inspiration to design a new architecture for this pattern. So let's get started and dive into it. Here is the architecture of the uh, circuit breaker pattern and let me explain you how it works. The first thing that I want to explain is how the uh, lambda pricing works, right? So, so when you execute your lambda function, you are charged based on the execution time of your lambda. But if the lambda is calling an external service and this external service takes two seconds to reply to your lambda, you're going to pay also for these two seconds because lambda is waiting there for the response of the external service. Now, if the external service is not replying or is taking 10 seconds to reply, you still pay those uh, 10 seconds, right? So with this pattern, what we want to avoid and what we want to do is to track the external service that we call from a Lambda function. And if these external service are not replying, we want to stop to send the request to the external service and just send back an error. So to uh, keep track of these errors, we need to store this information somewhere. And we're going to use DynamoDB for this. So here's like how it works. When we uh, reach, let's say, a certain number of failures for a particular service, and I can do this for each service that our Lambda function calls, I'm going to add an item in our DynamoDB. If uh, the, the count of these errors is greater than a certain threshold that we can set to our Lambda function, the Lambda function is not calling the external service anymore and it's just replying back with an error. In this way, we avoid wasting our time waiting for the external service to reply and we, we save the execution time of the, of the function and we send back the error to the client. So let's say it's the first time that our external service triggered an error. So what we're going to do is that we're going to catch the error, send an event to our event bridge and the event bridge event will trigger a lamb another lambda function which is gonna which is gonna add an item in our demo db how we're gonna add this item on demo db is basically we're gonna use an item with a ttl which is the time to live if you're not familiar with uh, demo db and how ttl works i also made a video about it i'm gonna tag it i'm gonna add it in the description but basically you can add an item with an expiration time and the expiration time and after the expiration time is expired, DynamoDB will delete the item from the table. So what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, add the items for each error of the service with, let's say, a 60 seconds timeout. And every time there's an error, we add an item. So on the next calls, our first Lambda function will check how many errors per specific service there are. And if the uh, count is, let's say, less than a threshold, it's going to call the service. Otherwise, it's going to just send back the, res the response to the client. So after that, the cool thing about this design, about this pattern, is that after the TTL is expired, we're going to remove the item from DynamoDB, and the next course of our Lambda function we're gonna, is going to try again to call the external service. So basically, if uh, a service is not, let's say, uh, replying to us, we give him 60 seconds, and then we try again. And then we can kind of play with this logic based on, uh, you know, the need of your application. So that's the um, say general idea. This is the architecture. Now I'm going to show you how to implement the service using the serverless framework and also I'm going to show you the code. All right. So keeping in mind the architecture that I just showed you, I'm going to now explain you with the serverless framework YAM file, how we can deploy it to AWS. So this is the serverless YAM file and this way you um, define all the services that you need. And uh, so let's start from providers like AWS, Runtime, Node.js 14. And here are like some configuration, stage and region. I use, I always use like a JSON file as a config. So here I have my JSON file with region stage and some others environment variables that we need. I'm going to explain you all of them when I walk you through the code. So basically here I'm saying, okay, deploy to uh, stage dev region US East one. And here I'm defining the I'm role statement that I need. So since we need DynamoDB table and we need to query and put item inside the table, I added a few, uh, you know, statements, you know, the, the, to give permission to the Lambda function to query, get item, put item, update item and delete item. And then we also need the Lambda function to be able to uh, put events on events bridge. 
So here I'm saying events it stands for event bridge. And here I'm saying give a put put star, which is basically all the uh, put actions on event bridge, and give this permission to the lambda function. Then, as we have seen on the architecture, we need two lambda functions. The first one is the uh, circuit breaker lambda function, which is the one called by your user and is the one calling the external service. So this function is triggered by the API gateway. So on the handler, I'm defining the function code, which is inside the uh, functions folder. And on the events block, I'm saying, okay, trigger this function using HTTP API, which is basically the API gateway. For the second Lambda function, which is the circuit breaker error, this is the Lambda function that add the error inside DynamoDB. I am again specifying the handler, which is circuit breaker error file inside the functions folder. But this time I want this Lambda function to be triggered by the event bridge event. So here I'm saying, okay, event bridge pattern source and the source is gonna be defined by the Lambda function in the code. You can put the string that you prefer here. I'm using event bridge dot circuit breaker so I can identify the service, but it's really up to you, to your use case. So we have the two Lambda function, the IAM statements. Now we need the uh, DynamoDB table. To use the DynamoDB table, there is the resource block and I am defining the table called error tracker, type DynamoDB table, here I'm defining the output, so I prefer to call, you know, the primary key and salt key of DynamoDB with very generic names, so I'm calling it PK and SK, and one is hash, so it's the PK is the partition key and SK is the um, salt key. Actually, you can see here hash stands for partition key and, and range stands for a sort key. And here you can define read capacity, I don't need anything crazy, so I put just one. And then you also want to specify the time to leave uh, attribute. So you can tell then to be which attribute do you want to use as the uh, time to leave attribute. And remember that it has to be of type uh, number. So it has to be a number and has to be expressed in seconds. If you use uh, an attribute for the time to leave in, of string type, it's not going to work. So the time to leave um, is not going to be triggered by Dynamo. So remember, this has to be uh, N number has to be number type, so n, as I specified here. So we define down on the B table, we have lambda function and all the triggers. Now we can switch the code and see uh, how the uh, pattern works. All right, so this is the uh, code for the circuit breaker function, which is the main function, the one triggered by the, and let's see how it works. So here I am getting the event in, and I'm getting the service name. So basically when you send, this is just for the sake of example, you know, so I can show you different service name when I trigger the Lambda function. And then we are getting, I'm just doing some logins and then I'm getting the um, now. So I'm calling date now and I'm um, transforming the uh, now in uh, seconds and dividing by 1000 because uh, now is giving back the uh, date now in milliseconds, but I need the time in seconds. I divided by uh, 1000, I call math round and I get the uh, now time in seconds. And now here I am uh, doing the first step of the architecture. So I'm checking on Dynamo if for this specific service, let's use the default one. So let's say I call this, this service Awesome API. So I'm going to check on Dynamo if I have errors for Awesome API. So I want to check if Awesome API is working, it's actually replying to me, of, of if we have uh, logged any error. And this, uh, depending on the result of the query, we're going to decide to uh, call the service because it means that um, the service is working and it is replying uh, quickly. If not, we're not going to call the service and we're going to just send back our, uh, an answer to the customer. So we avoid the extra time to call a service that we don't we know is not working at the time. So what I'm doing here is um, I check the, I use a service name and the now, as I said before, and I'm checking the, the condition on the table is get all the items with service name the service name that I'm checking and sort key greater or equal of from now. So the sort key contains the expression time of any error for a specific service. So if I have items with uh, expression time greater than now, it means that before this is this execution, there has been error for these specific services. And if this uh, if the number of items returned back from the query is greater than 
a narrow threshold that I set here. In this case, I put three as a threshold. I'm not going to call the service at all because I know that the service is not working. As we said before, it means that the circuit is open and I'm not calling the external service. I'm going to just send back uh, an error to my client. Next line is uh, call the, I call the query function on Dynamo. And um, as I said, if the errors count is uh, less than the threshold, it means that the service is working so I can uh, proceed with my logic. Otherwise, let's go on the else case. I'm going to just reply with the circuit is closed. We have detected too many errors for service name and unlock the service name. So the uh, in the case that the threshold the, sorry the counts of the errors are greater than the threshold i just send back the error to my client and i'm basically avoiding calling a service that i know that is not working in the case that the service calling is working i do my logic so i call the external service here here i'm like mocking uh, a call to external service by calling like a fake function we just give back a probability so here i'm saying give me an error with probability of 90 percent the function is really like a dummy function which sends back uh, a probability here I'm, I'm doing this just because i want to show you how the circuit breaker pattern works in a real case scenario here you will put the uh, call to your service and log if there is an error so let's assume here i'm calling a third-party api called awesome api and the awesome api is sending me back an error okay this means that i need to uh, log this error inside my dynamodb table and as we said before on the architecture how i'm gonna do it is gonna i'm gonna um, push an event into my event bridge here we are supposing there is an error and I am creating like the uh, payload to send to event bridge. So here I'm saying detail type and just HTTP call error, event bus name default. The source is event bridge circuit breaker. So is this the Lambda function as uh, the source time now? And here you can put like any metadata that you may need. And the next step is to uh, put the event inside event bridge and just uh, call the API. And here I'm replying back um, external service called failed. So at this point, we have pushed the event uh, inside event bridge and event bridge is going gonna, is gonna to trigger the second lambda function that we're going to see uh, just after this one. If uh, on the other case, on the happy case, let's say the our external service doesn't give back us an error, we just uh, send back to the client the um, the payload of the uh, service. So function is successful and that's it. So let's get back here on the error case and assume that we have pushed the um, event into event bridge and event bridge here is triggering our Lambda function error. Okay, so let's go on the Lambda function error. And uh, this Lambda function again is triggered by event bridge and has to add in DynoDB the uh, item. So the record of the service name that failed and also the expiration time. So it's very, it's a very, let's say, um, simple function, I will say, very straightforward. So it gets the event from event bridge. It gets the detail, error type, and service name from the from the event. And then again, I'm using the, I'm getting the now time in seconds, and I'm adding a timeout. I set the timeout to be equal to uh, 60 seconds. So after 60 seconds, the, the item from Dino Dynamo will be expired and removed from Dynamo. So what I'm doing here is that I'm creating the DynamoDB table with service name, expression type, error type just for login, and here I'm adding the TTL. Under the TTL, I'm putting the expression time. And the next step is just put the item on the table and send back the result. And that's it. Here the uh, flow is completed. All right, I hope it was useful, I hope it was uh, clear. Now I'm gonna deploy the stack and show you a demo on my AWS account. So in order to deploy your service with a serverless framework, you just you know open the terminal, you go to your service and you uh, type service deploy. Then it's gonna take a few seconds and it's gonna deploy all the resources taken from the service YAM file. As you can see here, there's the endpoint of the API gateway, the function that it has created, and that's it. So now we have deployed the service into AWS. Let's see how it works. Okay, so now to test the application, the first thing we need to do is to call the API. So here I put the uh, URL and now I'm called the API with the uh, service name and Rico API. So I click send and we got the external service call failed. Like now what happened basically? Basically what happened is that we call the um, our Lambda function, the Lambda function 
since this was this was the first iteration of course it didn't have any errors for the Enrico API service so what happened is that this value was true and basically we push an event into event bridge and we send back the uh, external service call failed if we go on AWS we should be able to see an item on our DB table it's actually that's the case Enrico API this is the expression time. Here's like some extra data that I wanted to add. Just an example. Actually, I can show you here. It's going to service called failed. And here is the TTL. So this item will be removed from DynamoDB when this expression time uh, hits. So after 60 seconds, basically. Now, what happens? This is the, since this is the first call, if I call again with Enrico API, uh, my Lambda function is going to try to call the external service again. So I'll call it and as well and this exactly was what happened so we're gonna see two items now so this is the second errors from enrico api now i'll call it a third time and we have three items here and remember that the items are basically added by the uh, second lambda function and the second lambda function is triggered by event bridge now since the uh, threshold for our service is three what i will expect is that if i call it again I'm gonna get another message, which is basically which is basically the circuit is closed. We have detected too many errors for a Rico API, and that's exactly the case. Because what happened is that since there were three errors for a Rico API, the uh, condition here was met. So uh, the query on Dynamo returned three values here. So the if is false. So we go on the else and we say the circuit is closed. In this way, you see. Um, my Lambda function didn't have to call the external service that we know is not working or is not replying. And we um, avoided to get billed for extra time of like a not working external service. Now, if we wait, you know, 60 seconds, I'm going to pause the video. The items will be removed from Dynamo. We will be able to call again the external service. One thing that is worth mentioning is that the TTL of Dynamo is not like exact by the second. Sometimes it can take even one minute more to delete the items from Dynamo or in the worst case scenario, even one hour. So it's not like an exact second time to leave. So remember this when you want to implement this pattern. Another useful uh, thing is that you can actually check when the element were deleted from, from Dynamo on the time to leave uh, monitor. So if you go on the uh, monitor tab here, CloudWatch metrics, you can see the TTL deleted item. So here you can see uh, we, uh, Dynamo has deleted the item that has expired. Since now the uh, items has expired and the table is empty, we can call again Rico API and give it another chance. And of course, this is uh, again uh, external self call list, external service call failed, but this is gonna add a new item and we are again at the starting point. All right, so we have just seen how to implement this circuit breaker pattern, how it works, and also a live demo on AWS. I hope this the, the video was useful. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Please remember to um, subscribe if you want to see more serverless uh, concepts and video. And uh, thanks again for watching. Cheers.